Now we're going to talk about the length and distance in a general Euclidean space. So first we'll need some notation. For points P and Q in n-dimensional Euclidean space, we're going to write PQ to denote the line segment joining P and Q. So this is this is a nice simple geometric object that uh, that we know from geometry, and uh, we're going to say the length. of PQ is denoted. So we have a double vertical line here, PQ line. So this is actually going to be in correspondence with uh, what we'll call the, the magnitude of the vector PQ arrow, and that's denoted similarly. So great. So we're going to identify this with this because they're essentially, they encode essentially the same object, right? The only difference is this is a geometric object and this is a algebraic object. And we're going to do most of our manipulations in algebra. So for R1, so we actually need to know what this number is. We need to know how to compute it. So for R1, that's really easy. Well, the magnitude, so now P and Q are just numbers. So P, that arrow is just equal to the absolute value of Q minus P. That's it. So that should be a minus sign. That was relatively painless. For R2, the magnitude, also known as the length or distance of PQ is equal to the square root of Q1 minus P1 square plus Q2 minus P2 square. And how do we see that? There's a really nice picture that describes what's happening. And then we essentially use the Pythagorean theorem. You know the Pythagorean theorem. So what's the picture? So we draw our 2D plane. Not so well, but there you have it. P here, Q here. We've got the line segment joining them, or alternatively the vector joining them, whatever you want to call it really awful. Uh, and the length of this is going to be norm PQ arrow. And we have a right triangle here. Very nice right triangle. Where this length is exactly Q2 minus P2. Right? It's exactly the, the distance I have to go in the second dimension to get from P to Q on the different levels. And this distance right here is Q1 minus P1, absolute value, right? And so when we, we relate all these things together, we have that P Q arrow square is equal to, by the Pythagorean theorem, Q1 minus P1 square plus Q2 minus P2 square. And since the square gets rid of the absolute value, we essentially get this formula when we take square roots. That's great. How do we get to three dimensions? Well, in three dimensions, it's it's pretty similar in some sense. It, it starts to get pretty similar. So, but what's the picture in three dimensions? What do we have to do that's a little different? So in three dimensions, I'm going to have my point P and my point, say, Q up here. And what's going to happen 
Well, I'm, I'm drawing the vector in between them. I've got the vector in between them, and I want this distance, p, q. And I want to use triangles again, because if I, if I can use triangles, then I can use the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm in good shape, right? So the analogous thing to do is I'm going to drop this into the x, y plane where p is sitting, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to come down there. And I'll get a corresponding point here that I'll call R, right? So this distance, this vertical distance, is going to be Q3 minus P3. And now I need to figure out, well, what's this, what's the length of this thing? So this is the distance from PR, or the vector PR, right? So that's the magnitude. Well, now I'm just in a 2D plane, right? If I think about it, I'm just in my XY plane here. So I can draw a right triangle. So I've got one right triangle here, and I've got another right triangle here, only it's living in this plane. And what are these distances? Well, this distance is exactly Q2 minus P2. And this distance right here will be Q1 minus P1. Right, very similar objects. So that means by the Pythagorean theorem that I know that the norm of PR is equal to the square root, right? It's a 2D distance now. I've, I've, I've cooked it so it's like that. It's going to be Q1 minus P1 square plus Q2 minus P2 square. That's great. And I also have, since this is a right triangle, that the norm of PQ, or the magnitude, is equal to the square root of the norm of PR, or the magnitude, plus Q3 minus P3 square. Because here's my Q3 minus P3, that's the length of this guy, and that's the length of this guy. And what happens when I plug this into there? Well, I just get Q1 minus P1 square plus Q2 minus P2 square plus Q3 minus P3 square. And that's it. That's it. And we're starting to see a pattern here. And it turns out that if you iterate this argument, say using induction, that for the general n-dimensional space, we have that the magnitude PQ, also equal to the length of the line segment adjoining P to Q, is equal to, we have a square root, We'll draw the upper line when we figure out how, how long this is going to be. Q1 minus P1 squared plus Q2 minus P2 squared dot 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 up to Qn minus Pn squared. And just the square root of that entire sum. Very nice. So now we can talk about length and distance in our Euclidean spaces, our general n-dimensional Euclidean spaces. And there's one more ingredient to be able to do interesting geometry. We've got one more ingredient that we have to figure out, and that's angles. So in two dimensions, we can get angles. In three dimensions, we can get angles. And in higher dimension, we can get angle. But how do we measure it? How do we calculate an angle? And that's what we'll talk about next when we introduce the inner product.